Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshu Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 17th of August. Three security personnel killed in terrorist attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Protest held against killing of youth by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. Death toll rises to at least 22 in Nepal, landslides several still missing. And now for all the details. Two paramilitary troopers and one police personnel lost their lives after terrorists attacked a check post in Baramulla district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday morning. Later in the day, two terrorists involved in the attack were neutralized by security forces during massive search operations that were ongoing till the last reports came in. Two personnel of paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force or CRPF and a policeman were killed in a terrorist attack on security forces in Baramula district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. The security personnel sustained critical gunshot injuries as the terrorists attacked a joint patrol party of the CRPF and the police at Kariri area of Baramula district. The personnel succumbed to their injuries at a hospital. Later in the day, two of the terrorists involved in the attack were neutralized during cordon and search operations that followed, a senior police official said. Operations were still underway till the last reports came in. <laughs> This was the second attack on security forces in Kashmir Valley in the past four days. On August 14, two policemen were killed and another injured at Norgam Bypass near Srinagar city in a similar attack. India and Nepal on Monday held a virtual meeting to discuss ongoing bilateral economic and developmental projects in the Himalayan nation. The meeting carried out a comprehensive review of bilateral economic and development cooperation project since its seventh meeting held on July 8 last year. India and Nepal on Monday held the eighth round of oversight mechanism meeting in which the two sides discussed the progress made in India-assisted development projects in the last one year. The meeting mechanism was set up in 2016 to monitor the progress of various India-assisted projects. The meeting carried out a comprehensive review of bilateral economic and development cooperation projects since its seventh meeting held in July 8 last year. The Indian Embassy in Kathmandu said in a statement, the co-chairs noted the progress made in the development projects in the last one year including reconstruction of 46,301 earthquake-affected houses out of the 50,000 houses committed by India in Gorkha and Nuwako districts, the operationalization of Motihari Amle Ganj cross-border petroleum products pipeline, the integrated check post at Biratnagar. Nepal also noted with appreciation COVID-19-related assistance, including the supply of medicines and medical equipment to Nepal by India. This came two days after Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli called up his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi to wish him on the occasion of Independence Day. Heavy rains across India's southern Telangana province has led to flood-like situations in several districts and water levels has risen in various reservoirs. The weather office has predicted more rains in the next three days and a high alert has been sounded in many areas of Telangana. Heavy rain in India's several southern states since last week has left many villages marooned with overflown streams and rivulets. Several areas had been submerged due to heavy rain since Friday night in Telangana state and parts of Andhra Pradesh state. The Godavari River has been in full spade inundating several villages all along its course after monsoon rains poured over several parts of the state, authorities informed. The Indian Meteorological Department on Sunday forecast light to moderate rains or thunder showers in many parts of the state at least till Thursday. Meanwhile, the situation in India's western Surat city, country's diamond hub, 
has been grim for days as incessant rainfall is not allowing flood water to recede. Aerial visuals of the city on Sunday showed water logging in most areas of the city with submerged buildings, vehicles and trees. आज का पांचवा दिन है कि लोग बिल्कुल परेशानी में मुश्किल में लोग जी रहे हैं लोगों के घर में कम से कम तीन फुट से लेकर पंद्रह फुट तक पानी भराया हुआ है जिसके लिए आज पाँच दिन से उनका काम धंधा रोजगार बिल्कुल बंद है यहाँ कम से कम एक हज़ार के आसपास दुकानें छोटी मोटी जो दुकानों के अंदर कम से कम दस हज़ार से लेकर डेढ़ लाख रुपये तक का लोगों का नुकसान हुआ है पाँच दिन से लोग हजारों लोग ऐसे कि जहाँ तक आने का फूड पैकेट भी नहीं पहुँच सका पानी पीने का भी नहीं पहुँच सका बिजली भी नहीं है Though annual rainfall is essential in India as rain support India's population living in rural areas who rely on farming. However, excessive rainfalls cause problems like floods and landslides. Moving on, scores of people held a protest in Balochistan on Sunday over the killing of a university student by Pakistan's paramilitary frontier corps in the region last week. The protesters demanded justice and raised concerns over the rising cases of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killing by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. A massive protest was held in Balochistan on Sunday over the recent killing of Hayat Mirza, a university student by Pakistan's Frontier Corps in Turbat city. According to local media reports, pro-freedom Baloch armed groups targeted a convoy of parliamentary frontier corps in Turbat last week, which inflicted casualties on the Pakistani forces. After the attack, the Pakistani forces cordoned off nearby area and arrested Hayat Mirza from a palm tree orchard and shot him dead in cold blood. The protesters on Sunday demanded justice and raised concerns over the rising human rights violations in Balochistan by the Pakistani security forces. In the latest, police have arrested a soldier of the Frontier Corps on the charge of killing Hayat Mirza and started an investigation. Baloch activists accuse that Pakistan army has been carrying so-called military operations in the region for years with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people. They blame thousands have been internally displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's acting foreign minister Mohammad Hanif Atmar has said that the international community has some considerations about the release of some prisoners. Last week, the Consultative Grand Assembly of Afghan Elders approved the release of the 400 Taliban prisoners, a step that was seen as a key push for the start of the intra-Afghan negotiations. Afghanistan's acting foreign minister Mohammad Hanif Atmar on Sunday said that the government is working on plans to remove problems in the way of peace while pledging that the challenges will be addressed in near future. The lawyer Jirga the Grand Council put five conditions on the Taliban besides approving the release of 400 of their prisoners, Admar said, while addressing a press conference in Kabul. However, according to him, the Taliban has not met these conditions so far. Atmar said one of the reasons behind the lack of implementation of lawyer Jirga decisions is inattention by the Taliban to an unconditional start of the intra-Afghan negotiations. He said the international community has some considerations about the release of some prisoners, but the government is working to achieve a consensus in this respect. The Taliban had stressed that they will not attend the talks until the release of the 400 prisoners is completed. The list of 5,000 prisoners was given to the Afghan government by the Taliban to be released ahead of the intra-Afghan negotiations, which are expected to be held in Doha. Last week, the lawyer Jirga approved the release of 400 Taliban prisoners, a step that was seen as a key push for the start of the intra-Afghan negotiations. In news from Nepal, that tool in the massive landslide in Nepal's Sindhupal Chok district reached at least 22 on Monday and 17 people still fear to be missing. A search team has recovered bodies of 19 individuals until Sunday evening and three more bodies were recovered from the landslide debris on Monday morning, according to the local media reports. 
The landslide hit Lidi village in Sindhu Falls Chowk on Friday morning, destroying several houses. A team of 55 security personnel from Nepal Army and police is involved in the search operation. However, the operation has been slow as the road leading to the village has been disrupted by floods and landslides. The incident came as Nepal's reconstruction authority had earlier suggested for relocation of the people living in the area due to the fragile situation of the soil. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Export industry in Bangladesh is showing data of limping back to normalcy amid COVID-19 pandemic. According to a recent Export Promotion Bureau data, the last month's export income in the country was over 44% higher than that in June, indicating the country's export sector is making profit after suffering serious blows owing to COVID-19 impacts. Bangladesh's exports in the first month of the current fiscal year reached about 4 billion US dollars, registering a meager 0.59% growth, showed the Export Promotion Bureau or EPB data recently. The EPB data showed July export income was over 44% higher than that in June, meaning the country's export sector is limping back to the normalcy after suffering serious blows owing to COVID-19 impacts. Of the total earnings, the EPB data showed the country's income from ready-made garment items including knitwear and woven stood at 3.24 billion US dollars. Due to the economic impacts of COVID-19 in Bangladesh and elsewhere in the world, Bangladesh export earnings in the past financial year sank about 17 percent, the lowest since the 2014-15 fiscal year. According to officials, Bangladesh's export income plunged as earnings from government mainly experienced severe slowdown after buyers from the United States and the European Union, which are by far the largest destination for the country's garment exports, have cancelled their orders in the wake of COVID-19. The garment sector accounts for around 80% of Bangladesh's annual exports and generates employment for some 4 million workers, while women make up around 80% of the garment workforce. Pilgrimage to the Holy Cave Shrine of Vaishnu Devi in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir resumed on Sunday, nearly five months after being suspended in March due to coronavirus pandemic. However, there will be some restrictions including less number of people allowed to visit the shrine every day, keeping in view the safety guidelines to curb the spread of COVID-19. The famous cave shrine of Vaishnu Devi situated in Katra town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir reopened for pilgrims on Sunday after being suspended for nearly five months due to the coronavirus pandemic. The shrine in the Trikota Hills attracts a large number of devotees from across the country every year. However, with the coronavirus cases rapidly rising in the country, the scene this year is different as only 2,000 devotees would be allowed to visit the holy place per day. Authorities have kept only online registration for the pilgrimage to ensure there is no crowding at the shrine. Without face mask, kisi ko allow nahi kiya jayega. Sanitizer sab jagah lagaye gaye hain. Unko use karna hoga. Aur wahan par yatra ke time mein proper social distancing ka paalan karna hoga. The pilgrimage that was suspended in March will allow 1,900 devotees from Jammu and Kashmir Union territory and rest 100 from outside the territory for the first week. Only those who will test negative for coronavirus will be allowed to go on the pilgrimage. हमें सर बहुत खुशी है इतने टाइम बाद जो माँ का दरबार खुला हमें यही था कि हम पहले जाएं और पहले जाके माँ के दर्शन करें। India is the world's third worst hit country behind only the United States and Brazil, with more than 2.6 million confirmed coronavirus cases. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.